Well guys, I'm sure you've heard the news by now and seen the teasers. There's a new Titan card in town. If you've ever bought anything online, I guarantee you, you're gonna wanna pay attention because your financial information could be at risk. We've all heard about the hacks, we've heard about the breaches, and the millions of users' bank account information that has been compromised due to those breaches. Well, privacy.com, who sponsored today's video, by the way, has a way to stop that. It works as like a VPN between your financial institution and the merchant. Set up an endless amount of spending cards that you have backed by your bank account. You create a number, you create a limit, and you can even set reoccurring, you can set one-time use, you can pause the card. Or in my case, I used it as an allowance card for my daughter who's playing games and now wants to use microtransactions all the time. Well, I can set her own card and her own allowance, allowing her to be able to do that without having access to my actual credit card information. But the best thing about privacy.com is it's 100% free to use. You can use the Google browser plugin or the app to access your account, make changes, lock cards, or increase limits. So new users who sign up using my link in the description below, that's privacy.com slash jays2cents, that's J-A-Y-Z-T-W-O-C-E-N-T-S, jays 2 cents that's j a y z t w o c e n t s will get $5 credited to their account to use on their first purchase. So you would protect your internet experience, why not protect your spending experience 100% free by using privacy.com slash jays2cents, or just click the link in the description below. Okay, so I'll be the first to admit that when I did my video about NVIDIA's product stack and pricing scheme that they probably slid the name up a tier, which is why we saw $1,200 butt reams, known as the 2080 Ti, and that they probably wouldn't be a Titan card. Well, as you can see, this is the gold-colored manifestation of my incorrectness. So I admit that. So what do you get here? Well, the Titan, is a $2,499 stopgap card that exists between the gaming series and the Quadro series. So here's what we're gonna do. We, I've already tested the card. I've already ran it through its full uh, testing suite. Well, I say full testing suite, the gaming suite. There will be two videos on this, and I'm sorry for the two-parter, but that's because when I went through the reviewer's guide and talked to NVIDIA about this card, because I had a lot of questions, I basically was like, why does this card exist? Why are you guys undercutting your own Quattro line? And they basically kind of ex explained it to me and why this card exists, who it exists for and stuff. And there's, a, there's some tests that we want to run on this card that we've not run before. That are specifically going to be for like AI, de you know, deep learning, stuff I've never done that's going to take more time to learn so that we can compare it to older cards, which uh, I didn't have time to get done before today. I felt like it deserved its own piece of uh, content, if you will. But because we've always historically tested Titan cards on this channel in gaming, that's why we're testing this today in games. And I'm wearing these black gloves because it's super shiny and gold and pretty. And when you look at it, it gets fingerprints. And so I didn't want to uh, dirty that up. Now I had fully intended to do an extra test on this, which I've decided to sort of spoiler alert and tell you guys I decided not to do. And that was gonna be SLI. Let's see if I can do this without damaging it. People cringe when I do this. Let me go ahead and just spoiler alert and tell you that these two cards, valued at $5,000, are actually significantly slower than my 2080 Ti SLI homebrewed ice bucket challenge that Steven at Gamers Nexus and I kind of uh, competed with. These two cards don't even come close to what we achieved with the chilled 2080 Ti's. The 2080 Ti's overclocked much farther than these cards were able to because these have much more, and that's dirty, see it's dirty. That's what I'm talking about, I hate this, the, the dirt. Anyway, these cards have much more dense cores in there, means more of them, and as you add more CUDA cores in the same die size or whatever, larger, slightly larger size, it becomes harder to overclock. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and just show you guys the benchmarks, because we know that's what you guys care about. And then we will go ahead and uh, maybe we'll do a little bit of live testing here to sort of show you in real time what the performance is like. Tested in Battlefield 5, because again, the only title that takes advantage of RTX as it currently stands at this date in 2018. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what else are we gonna do with them? I mean, <laughs> they're pretty. Yeah, I just roll the things.
So as you can see, the main difference between both of these cards is one is silver and one is gold. Now spec differences between the cards, uh, this is, the, so the Titan RTX, or RTX Titan, whichever order you wanna say it, I guess, is a fully unlocked TU-102 core, which is what we thought the 2080 Ti was. In fact, a lot of people even reported as such, but clearly NVIDIA was like, ha ha, wrong. So, in the 2080 Ti, we've got 68 RT cores, or ray tracing cores. In the Titan, we've got 72, so there's four more of them. Not a lot, but I don't know how much more of a difference that's gonna get us in RTX applications, which is why we're gonna be testing some Battlefield 5 in live uh, mode right now to show you that. We've got uh, 544 tensor cores in the 2080 Ti, and 576 of them in the Titan, or, or the, I almost said Titan X. I keep wanting to call it Titan X because the last three Titans were called Titan X, but I digress. So we've actually got 32 more of those, CUDA cores in the 2080 Ti are 4,352, a massive amount, but still not nearly as massive as the Titan V's over 5,100 of them. And the RTX Titan has 4,608 CUDA cores. So again, not as powerful and raw CUDA performance as a Titan V would be, you know, their first gold card. But the Titan V also doesn't have RT cores or ray tracing cores. So you wouldn't be able to take advantage of RTX titles anyway. Now, we also have memory differences, obviously 11 gigabytes of GDDR6 in the 2080 Ti and 24 gigabytes of it in the RTX Titan. Obviously, no titles today are gonna take advantage of 24 gigabytes of VRAM. That's one of the things that's obviously there for the tensor cores and, or the AI cores to do their job. And they are obviously able to leverage that, which is something that uh, we wanna test when we do the professional workflow AI tests. But in those slides, as you took a look at, you probably saw that obviously at 1080p, we were seeing some serious diminishing returns and they were very close with 2080 Ti. That is because even though we are running an 8700K overclocked to nearly five gigahertz, we still are seeing a massive amount of diminishing returns and bottlenecking. In fact, if I don't even overclock the CPU, we see about 20 to 30 FPS lower in 1080p on the Titan card and not quite as much of a return or diminishing return with non overclocked CPU than the 2080 Ti. In fact, the 2080 Ti was faster than the Titan card and a non overclocked CPU because bottlenecking reasons. So there's some things you're gonna to wanna to optimize on your system though that is gonna help alleviate that. Obviously you're gonna to wanna to overclock your CPU because IPC on AMD and Intel are very similar now, but you want more clocks, more cycle. So you wanna get the clock frequency as high as you can. That's gonna help it handle uh, the refresh rate. Also too, if you go into the NVIDIA control panel, go over here to the manage 3D settings and you wanna make sure that where it says power management mode on optimal power is set to maximum performance, apply that. Actually, I didn't want to hit apply yet. It's one of the things we need. We also want to change texture filter quality to high performance. These are going to make some changes to the textures and stuff and the way they're rendered. That's going to increase performance, but you're not going to really even notice a difference. And then obviously for testing reasons, we don't want G-Sync enabled because we don't want anything to potentially limit our frames per second. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and get into some Battlefield 5. We just recently did a video, and yeah, I know a lot of you guys hate the title, but still it's a testing title. It's an RTX title. It's the only title we have to test these features for now, at least until Metro, um, what is it? What is it, what's it calling it? Metro, what did they change? Oh, Exodus, that's it. Metro Exodus. And then I don't think Rise of the Tomb Raider or Shadow of the Tomb Raider has implemented DLSS yet. Okay, so one of the things they had changed in Battlefield 5 that made RTX performance increase is the fact that they were rendering RTX or at least calculating the leaves and stuff, the foliage, which is ridiculous. I don't know why they would do that. But this is that same scene I showed you before in the last few videos on how, how RTX works, how it's dealing with reflections and you know, it could be rendering things that are behind you because of reflections. Uh, you can see the fire right there, obviously. Um, but here's what we're gonna do. We're in 1440p right now. Everything is max. We're sitting at 63 FPS, which really isn't, really isn't any better than the 2080 Ti, to be honest. Hey guys, Editing Jay here. And Phil. So we're doing the side-by-side -side comparison and we can see that the Asus uh, Strix 2080 Ti is actually about anywhere between six to 10 FPS faster than the RTX Titan. So our only guess here is that there's probably a game profile that needs to be updated in the driver to take full advantage of RTX with the Titan. So yeah, interesting here that a card that's half the price is actually performing better. So um, yeah, there's that. Okay, here, back to the video. And then when you disable DXR and DX12 and you go into DX11, you get 150 FPS in 1440 
with everything on Ultra. So as you can see though, although the performance is outstanding and it's definitely mouthwatering, it comes at a price premium at $2,499. You can actually get two of these 2080 Ti's and still have a hundred bucks left over versus the price of one RTX Titan, let alone two of them in SLI. Now I know a lot of you that are just diehard enthusiasts are gonna run out and you're gonna buy two because you don't care, you're gonna put them in your system because money is no object and that's good for you. The thing is, um, when it comes to gaming, I mean, this is probably the first time, it's probably the first time it's true where they're like, this is not a gaming card. But then that would mean that this isn't a gaming card either because of the fact that it's literally the same thing, it's just this has slightly more of all of it. With the exception of memory has more than double. So you can't necessarily say the Titan RTX is not a gaming card, but the 2080 Ti is when they're exactly the same core, exactly the same architecture and, and all of that. So that's why I test Titans with games. Like I said at the beginning of this video, we will be doing professional workflow testing, AI testing, deep learning, all that stuff, but I've got to become a little more versed in it because it's something I've never experienced before because that sort of leads us into why this card exists. This is for people who are doing professional CAD design, professional deep learning testing, any sort of research for the guy that doesn't have an enterprise backing him with huge enterprise dollars. So that's why it exists. But you can pretty much play games on any GPU, even a workstation card. Doesn't mean it's gonna be great at it. Fortunately, the driver for this in the BIOS does a pretty good job at it, as you could see. This is where you guys come in though. I need some help. I need to know what tests you think we should be running on this for doing things like deep learning testing. There are some benchmarks that exist out there. There's synthetics. There are problems with synthetics because they are not always indicative of a real life experience, but they are extremely consistent when it comes to back-to-back -back testing. That way we can remove all variables, at least as much as possible, to get us true tests. And we can test them with Pascal cards and of course the RTX cards. So guys, we're gonna go. Um, like I said, the start of this video, spoiler alert, I know I have two of them. I didn't do SLI testing because it was just straight up bottleneck city and uh, our 2080 Ti's on chilled water were faster than these. The EVGA XC Ultra cars were faster than these when chilled which means the only way I'm gonna make these faster is to put these on chill. I don't know, maybe we'll do that if we get bored enough someday. If you guys want us to see, if you guys wanna see us mutilate these cards and uh, put them on water and see how far they'll go, you guys know what you gotta do. You gotta hit that like button. So thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.